I really hope this doesn't start a big fight or a flame war, but just know that if I have to, I can defend myself. Okay, so I need to address something that I kept seeing come up in the comments on the video that I made about the possible future of Star Wars as a franchise. Um, and this is the first of what I'm going to say this is, has put the potential to become an occasional series. Because every now and then things go on in my comments section that I find myself going, wait, what? And what I've started doing, and I actually started doing it even before this, but what I've started doing is um, requesting citations when I see people bringing up things that like I've never heard of and can't seem to find through Google. And, uh, and in this case, it was in reference to things um, said by Kathleen Kennedy um, and other Lucasfilm associated people. Because there were more than a few people in the comments section of that video who made reference um, or went on lengthy uh, diatribes uh, talking about how Kathleen Kennedy specifically and Lucasfilm in general and sometimes calling out some of the other some of the other people like J.J. Abrams or Ryan Johnson have been actively insulting the fan base calling them uh, well actually you know what I'm going to read you some direct quotes because I've started taking notes when I deal in what people say because for you know I'm I'm not great at a lot of things there are plenty of things I'm I'm prepared to shoot at the hip from, but when it comes to talking about what people said, I kind of want to use their exact words. I want to be careful about that. So here are some examples of some things that I'm talking about. Um, they, meaning Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson, uh, called fans racist, anti-female, and homophobes. I, I am going to like adjust for grammar on some of these, so forgive me for that. Uh, both directors and Kennedy called anyone who didn't like The Last Jedi racist and sexist. Kathleen Kennedy mandated gender politics to be forced into the film. Lucasfilm said people who didn't love episode eight are alt-right racist sexist. They called people who disagree with the direction racist sexist man babies. You'll notice a recurring theme there of calling basically people who were dissenting, had dissenting opinions on the last couple of Star Wars movies um, out as bigots and being dismissive of them. And initially when I saw that, it was bre it was being brought up so often and so casually as if this was just a, a well understood fact that initially when I started planning to do this video, what I thought it was going to be about was about just fan mishandling, which is a topic I've touched on a couple of times recently. It, it came up when talking about the whole Channel Awesome thing, because ultimately, you know, a big part of what caused their mess was the response to things. Or I've also brought it up in regards to Star Wars before, although it was in terms of managing fan expectation as opposed to something like this. And also it's something that I actually have seen happen before, uh, and that I, I actually have seen direct uh, instances of, um, you know, in the past, but I'll, I'll sort of come back to that in a minute. So it made sense, and I just went about thinking, well, you know, it, it, I think it's worth talking about the ways in which people get goaded and get goaded or prompted by questions to say things that end up hurting them, their brand, their franchise, whatever, and to talk about that. That's what I thought I was going to do. But when I tried to source these quotes, I couldn't find them. Now, let me say up front, I am not the world's best researcher. If you know anything about me, I actually avoid research like the plague if I can help it at all. I don't enjoy doing it. I'm not great at it. So I, I am open to the possibility that my Google foo uh, was not up to the task. And actually, with that in mind, I went a few steps beyond. I was actually requesting citations from these comments and of the various comments that I read you as well as some others, only two people responded to that. Most people gave no response to my request for citation. Um, one of those respondees was very uh, impassioned. They didn't ultimately give me a citation, a source, somewhere that I could go to as the root of these quotes. Um, one person provided uh, actually a uh, 
probably five or six things, but um, more than half of those were actually think pieces written by folks who were not directly involved in the making of these films. And that's another thing I want to be distinct. You don't, I don't need any help in finding think pieces, punditry, fan on fan, you know, of people calling folks with issues with either The Last Jedi or Solo or um, The Force Awakens or whatever, calling people who didn't like that racist, sexist, whatever. I can find that on my own. That I can find. It's not other people talking about it that I have any interest in, because I know that exists. It's quotes from the people actually involved, because that, that was what interests me. Um, and, and, I, and again, I thought I was going to be talking about how people just aren't properly managing uh, you know, the PR related to the stuff that they're in charge of. But again, I couldn't find this. So I, I even went so far as to put the call out on Twitter. Like, can anybody cite any sources on this? And what I came away with, ultimately with all of this, was two articles, one picture, and one tweet that I think are in some way at least worth touching upon. That's actually not a lot. And now, can I find a ton of articles referencing these same things? Yeah, I can find a fair number of those. And again, mostly think pieces. That's not much. Like for how much people are saying that, you know, are, or at least are behaving as if this is so obvious, that's not a lot of concrete evidence, at least that I have been able to find. Um, and, and if, in response to this, I get given citations to a ton of things that are beyond what I was able to find or source that makes, that changes my perspective. I will immediately turn around and make a follow-up video on what I originally said this was intended to be. But I couldn't find the evidence to back it up. So instead, I'm going to talk about just the way in which these things are being blown out of proportion and I don't think are necessarily being questioned even by people who may not be automatically inherently inclined to believe them because I mean I think we've probably all heard the term confirmation bias at this point in the last couple of years especially in regards to you know things that get pushed on social media when you see an article headline um because Let's be honest, most of us read headlines and maybe skim the body, but even if you read the whole thing, when you see an article on something that backs up a belief you already hold, you're less inclined to question that source. You're less inclined to go, wait a minute, have I ever heard of this site before? Where are they getting this information? If it confirms something you already believe, that's human nature. That's not, I mean, I do that. We all do that. So I think at least to a certain degree, that's kind of what's going on here because these few things, and I am going to address them in specifics, that get brought up seem to be referenced to as bigger than what, at least to my eye, they appear to be. And then that just snowballs as its own thing. And you hear it said and you go, oh man, I can't believe she said that. I knew she was like that. And it confirms something you thought. So you, and then it, it, it just spreads further. It goes viral in the bad way. Um, it is funny to me that going viral is, some, is sometimes a desired thing. Viruses are good. We, we do understand that, right? Ah, that, that's me getting hung up on semantics now. So, Here's what I was able to find in terms of specific things that were actually said. And, uh, you know, my thanks to the people who did respond um, to me with things to with citations, with things that I actually could reference that were sources. So here's what I've got. One of the big ones um, was from IndieWire, and this was in February of this year. Now, I'm going to read you the headline because I'm, I'm actually, well, I'll read you the headline and then I'll say this. Headline is, J.J. Abrams, Star Wars fans who don't like Last Jedi are threatened by women characters. Exclusive. Um, I don't know IndieWire. I mean, I know IndieWire has been around for a while. I'm not questioning them legitimately. I don't know if they have a tendency 
you know, towards sensationalizing um, headlines and whatnot. But that, for what he actually said, is a sensationalized title. And I do think a, a misleading title because it the the title of the article is speaking in as in declarative terms. It's speaking as if this is what he said. His words, as the title of this article would have to say, is fans who didn't like Last Jedi are threatened by women characters. Here's what he actually said. If you are someone who feels threatened by women and needs to lash out against them, you can probably find an enemy in Star Wars. His statement has the component parts of what the title of the article was, but isn't really saying the same thing. It's saying, if you do feel threatened, then you won't like this film. But the title claims the inverse, that he said, if you don't like this film, then you will, then you must feel threatened. And that's not. Saying it one way doesn't make it true the other. It's the inverse property. You know, the, I, live, I live in Vermont. The state of Vermont is in the United States. All Vermonters are Americans, but the inverse is not true. Not all Americans are Vermonters. You know, it's base. It's that basic. And the, the way in which he phrased it matters. The way he phrased it was, if this is an issue for you already, then you will see something to hate in these films. Not, if you hate these films, this is your issue. So, uh, that, that one... I again, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna blame IndieWire for that. That's not even necessarily a case. Well, I think possibly it is a case of people reading the article and blowing and you know taking the words um, out of context, selective or whatever. But the the article itself, honestly, that's a that's a really sensationalized, galvanizing, polarizing title, and shame on them for it. If I'm being blunt. Now, again, if you still want to say that you feel that his words and his sentiment are indicative of a mentality that you disagree with, that's one thing. But what he said isn't even what the title of the article claims that he said. So that's one. Next up is a quote from Kathleen Kennedy. Now, the source I've got on this is New York Times, which I believe is the original article. And this is from, uh, this is from before Rogue One was released. So this is back in 2016. So this is going back a ways. And actually, I, in looking for, for these things, I did find several articles basically stating how Kathleen Kennedy was not directly engaging in responses to you know a lot of the backlash and and the things being said about her and and the films that she was producing that was actually a theme that kept coming up and given that the only thing that i could find that actually has her own words in it is from 2016 that kind of backs it up so i don't think she's i mean whatever it is you feel that she believes or has been saying she doesn't seem to be saying it very often but here is what she said now this was in regards to whether or not she feels the need to placate the critics of the moves going on with Star Wars. And the nature of the question, you know, does kind of lead things towards the question of, well, you keep putting female leads in these things. Because this, again, this was ahead of Rogue One, so Force Awakens had already happened, so we had Rey, and then we got Jyn Erso. So what she said... Uh, there's sort of two parts to this. First thing she said was, I have a responsibility to the company that I work with. I don't feel that I have a responsibility to cater in some way. And to be fair, that is at the very least factually accurate. Ultimately, she is beholden to whoever writes her paycheck. Now, you can certainly say in a roundabout way that that is the fans because the fans make the money that make the you know investors and stockholders and people above her have it be worth anything. And so, but like du directly saying you know who she's actually answering to. So now, second part, and this is the one that I think uh, probably ruffled feathers. She said, I would never just seize on saying, well, this is a franchise that's appealing primarily to men for many, many years, and therefore I owe men something. Now, honestly, the, the, the wording on that statement is a little weird. I had to like read it and reread it a couple of times to sort of be like, wait, what is she actually saying? But, but the first thing to note is she's sort of putting, she's putting out a quote of, 
I this is something I wouldn't do. But the the way that this got recontextualized for a lot of write-ups and think pieces is that Kathleen Kennedy feels she doesn't owe the fans anything, which isn't quite what she said. And this one, she obviously was addressing something specifically in terms of qu of a question of about what some fans feel about these films in terms of what they think about the the way in which male characters are utilized and the prominence of female characters. And at least my read on it, the point that I think she was trying to make, and again, this is now me interpreting. So obviously, you know, some people have interpreted this way. My take on it is what she was trying to say was I I'm expanding it out. I'm not I'm not going to continue to, to just feed it to the same audience that it's been primarily fed at. Um, and, and again, I, I am open to the possibility that I am incorrect about that. And even if I am correct about that, she could have worded it better. The way she worded it was a little bit more, I don't know, uh, not combative is the wrong word because it wasn't even. But Really, what it breaks down to what she's saying is I do, I'm not obligated to do this the way it should, it's should. it been done up to this point. Although her wording is easily construed in a way that added fuel to this fire. But it's not the open antagonism that I, seems to be getting evoked by people who we're bringing this stuff up at the con in the comments. So that's those are the two those are the two and only two articles that I was able to find. Um, in addition to that, there is the often cited picture, this one of Kathleen Kennedy uh, and several other women wearing a shirt that says the force is female. This thing, oh boy, okay. The force is female is not a Lucasfilm thing. The Force is Female is a Nike marketing campaign aimed around the idea of women of just female strength. And she was not the only one wearing it there. She was not the, there were plenty of people not associated with Star Wars wearing it there. Where it was being worn was not a Star Wars event. It was an event um, in relation to women empowerment in business and things of that nature that she was invited to. Um, so she was one of a fairly large number of people who were wearing that shirt. That shirt was not made for the purposes of antagonizing uh, Star Wars fans. It, it exists from a Nike campaign that is its own thing. <laughs> and, and that campaign does not have a Star Wars tie-in, so we're clear as well. And so that one, I think that one more than any is really a jumping on and ignoring context. Because you show that image. I mean, if, if, you've are, if, if a narrative already exists that this woman is pushing um, you know, a certain view of this franchise, a feminist view of this franchise, and you look at that image, you go, well, that's it. But there's context to that image and why it exists that seems to get ignored pretty much completely. And initially when I saw that image, because I, I knew it was a Nike campaign, initially when I saw that image, I did think, well, she, maybe she still should have thought better than to wear it. But thinking on it, like, it wasn't even a Star Wars, like, event. It wasn't like she showed up to the premiere or a promotional tour for the franchise wearing that. And so it, that one really does feel like a cherry pick. Um, again, other people may ascribe more value to that than I do. Other people have clearly. But again, th these are the only things I was able to find. So the last thing, because somebody cited a recent tweet from John Kasdan. Now, John Kasdan was one of the two writers on Solo, and I've also talked about him before because he was the one who claimed that Lando was pansexual. And that was something that, um, well, kind of set me off. If you haven't seen my video on queer baiting, that came up 
That was the first thing that came up. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of do already have feelings about this guy, but here's what he tweeted. This is from the 18th of May this month. What he And uh, this would have been before the release of the film. And what he tweeted was, sorry to have brought identity gender politics into Nope, not sorry at all because I think Galaxy, I think the Galaxy George Lucas gave birth to in 77 is big enough for everyone, straight, black, white, brown, Twi'lek, Seleucin, Wookiee, Droid, and anything in between, hashtag droid rights, hashtag we are sentient. So I'm not going to rehash my feelings about his original claim that Lando is pansexual. He's not. It is vaguely hinted at at best by a character that in context, I have no reason to give any belief to her words. But setting that aside, because I don't need to go down that rabbit hole again, the tweet is him saying he's not sorry because he believes Star Wars is for everyone. And at worst, like the tone of starting to go, I'm sorry, nope, like that's a little it's dickish even seems like too strong a word. I mean, that's that's slightly um, antagonistic, I suppose. Just slightly. I can't think of a softer word. It's not harsh, but the actual message of that tweet is this is for everyone. And I had and I tried to include more people than already were currently included with this. Um, and he did specifically say white as well. It's not like when he listed the people that this is for, he excluded white. Um, or he, or that he excluded, um, well, actually he didn't cite gender at all. He said straight, gay, black, white. He didn't say men or women, so he didn't even touch on gender there. But he, he, he said straight and he said white. Um, so that's all I've found for the... Again, just judging by the way people throw it out, their seeming mountain of, of evidence that Kathleen Kennedy is mandating these inclusions, that um, the directors are um, pushing them and insulting people who don't like their films. These are the only instances I can find. Okay, gonna jump in here real quick because basically one other thing was brought to my attention between when I shot this video and when I was editing it. And it's something that I honestly don't, again, don't think it has a lot of substance to it, but it is about as relevant as the other stuff that I found. So I'm gonna talk about it really quick because this thing's long enough as it is. There was a tweet from Ryan Johnson. This was back in February. And his exact tweet was, uh, it, and I'll give the full context for a second, but the tweet was, and I'm sure this is something that's come up because it's, it's an actual word that I saw used that people saying that this was something Lucasfilm people were calling fans. He said, don't feed the man babies. Now, that is something he said, and that is a word he said. Context, which matters. Let's remember, uh, the context on that is that there was a tweet put out by a Twitter user called Geek Girl Diva, uh, who is not a Twitter user I know, she, but I'm, I don't I don't really do Twitter properly, if we're being honest. But she had um, put out an image of Carrie Fisher and said that she felt that The Last Jedi was a love letter to Carrie. And, you know, I think a lot of us... Um, regardless of how we feel about that film, we're still feeling the loss of her. And that was very clearly what she was expressing in that tweet. And there was another user who came in and basically started getting snarky about it and dropping Mary Poppins references right off the bat. Now again, whether you like how Leia was handled in that film or not, that that at least that to me reads as inappropriate because it was very much, it was clear she was putting out a heartfelt message. That's not really the forum or the outlet to to air your grievances about the the scene of her force pulling herself back from space. I mean, that's that that's like showing up at somebody's funeral and going, "Yeah, but he kicked me in the nuts one time." Like, dude, not the time of the place. Like, I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm exaggerating a little, but that's the vibe that I got off this. And she did engage with this guy. There was a back and forth between them. So Ryan Johnson saying, don't feed the man babies was actually not a general statement about fans. It was about 
one sp well it was basically it was him saying don't feed the trolls but it was and even though it says man babies plural which it seems to be what everyone's running with he was referring to one specific guy that ignited him to say that so yes it was a term that has been used once by one person in reference to a specific incident with a specific fan who i'm sorry was kind of being a jerk so i and, and the other thing is because I, I, I fail to mention this later on, because like I said, I'm editing this thing right now. Um, God, I'm rambling too much. Okay. <laughs> the, the thing is, is that I keep seeing people, because more comments like this have shown up on my videos while I've been editing, saying, you know, Kathleen Kennedy's been insulting people. She's calling people names. She's calling people, like, they keep saying her name and calling people names. Regardless of whether or not you want to take this quote from Ryan Johnson as name calling, or even if you want to over extrapolate out of what J.J. Abrams said or any of that, Kathleen Kennedy hasn't called anybody names. The worst thing that you can say is, depending on your interpretation of her line about her, that she doesn't feel she uh, needs to pander to anybody. That's about the only thing with any meat on it, but she doesn't call anybody names in that. So, dudes. People had people if have been called names mostly by other fans. She hasn't called anybody names. Not that I can find. Again, back to the original scheduled thing. And even if you want to ascribe more value to these than I do, which you know, you interpret them as you will, that's four solid source citations that I could find since any degree of controversy started up, I would say, I guess in the wake of the first trailer for The Force Awakens when we first saw Finn, because let's be honest, that was when there was initially a, a, a stirring of uh, some resent and resentment and some questioning of uh, agenda and politics and whatnot. That was 2015, I think. So in the last three years, I found four things from three different people that again to my reading don't carry a lot of vitriol or clearly have been taken out of context and the thing is when looking into you know the questions of backlash and whatnot Kathleen Kennedy is actually getting more substantive criticism from the people that, uh, at least the folks making these sorts of claims in my comments, probably think have her back, which is she keeps getting called out for the fact that every single director that has been hired so far to work on Star Wars, whether it be for the, um, for the movies or to uh, start working on TV projects um, under her watch has been a white male and that isn't even a criticism that's being made in a vacuum because she herself said back in 2015 that she would love to have women involved at that creative level so she herself brought it up but then hasn't delivered on it so it, it it's funny for me that i ended up finding honestly a lot more support for that as a criticism of kathleen kennedy that she is talking up um inclusion but not backing it up when it comes to hiring directors which is something that she herself specifically cited she wanted to do so that <laughs> I, like, I'm not saying that that counterbalances any other argument any anybody wants to make. I just found that really kind of curious and interesting. Now, I did mention that part of the reason I was initially inclined to think that I was going to find evidence for this was because it has happened before. And it has. It happened in 2016 with Ghostbusters. Because when there was the outcry against that film, at least a portion of which was motivated by, no, no, I'll back up. I'm not gonna say it was motivated by sexism, but was absolutely certainly treading in the language and the mentality of sexism and misogyny. Whether you wanna argue that that was the root cause of some of the criticism or not, you cannot deny that some of the criticism was absolutely making use of that kind of rhetoric. They 
when when I say they, I mean the the actors, the crew, the director, the studio, very much actively pushed back against it, called it out. Um, you know, in response, they put they you know put out a cast picture with them holding up girl power. Kevin Feige was very. Um, you know, directly pushing back um, against these people, and and that I can find citations and sources for, um, and it and it's something that even he himself uh, in the years since has said he probably would it probably would have been better to just not engage because all he did was fuel the fire and fuel the flames and also cause what I thought I was going to be talking about in this video when I started, which was um, the fact that when you get spurred to action through anger, you have a tendency to lump people together in a way that makes things worse for you. And in that case, there was a lumping together of all criticism uh, pre-release of the film as being motivated by sexism. And speaking as someone who was critical of the film, but the fact that they were women was never my problem with it, it was really frustrating to see not only think pieces, but also people associated with the film appearing to conflate all criticism with coming from sexist sources and quote unquote haters. And that is frustrating and that can turn people who are on the fence or maybe even inclined to be on your side against you because they they feel dismissed and marginalized by you. So that can happen, that has happened. And I'm pretty sure actually that Kathleen Kennedy and the other folks noticed that that happened. And that's probably why, at least so far as I'm able to tell, they're not talking about these things actively. They are occasionally responding to questions being posed in interviews. And when I say occasionally, I mean like once a year. And then those few words are being used like smoking guns that I just, I don't think they are. So I don't want I don't want people to come away thinking my point in this was to totally dismantle this argument and go, and therefore it's absolutely not true. But I bet, cause that's not what I'm trying to do here. Now, I don't want this to come across like it's me going checkmate because I don't have that attitude. I'm just a guy trying to figure out what is going on in a fandom that seems to be losing its friggin' mind on all sides of this divide and it's not fun for me. So me diving down this rabbit hole is just me trying to figure out what is going on and what is this stuff built off of. And again, to my eye, it doesn't seem to be built off of much, but it has erupted into this huge thing that, and again, has people, not people associated directly with the films, but does have people going, you you guys who hate this movie are all sexist or misogynist or racist or whatever. I know people are saying that, but they're not Kathleen Kennedy. They're not J.J. Abrams, they're not Ryan Johnson. And these things that people who are believed to be on their side those things those people are saying is being ascribed to what these folks actually making the films are saying. And you need to be careful about that. And I'm not expecting this video to change anybody's mind. At this point, I think people's beliefs and stances and positions they've taken are pretty embedded. So you're going to believe what you want to believe. What I would ask in the name of sanity is check the sources actually especially check the sources on something that seems to confirm a belief for you because it's a weird thing to be so certain of something and then go looking for the evidence and not finding it that's a weird sensation and i think it would behoove more of us to go through that because fan star wars fandom right now is not something i'm proud to be a part of and and i'm saying that because of the way people are behaving and the level of vitriol being thrown about. And I'm not saying that you have to support or you should hate or you should be supporting these films or you should hate these films or let you do whatever you're going to do, but accept that other people are going to do the other option. And that's not really affecting you. You know, make your decision for yourself. 
for whatever reason, if you want to make the conclusion that you will not see these movies again, that is the conclusion you have come to. Other people may come to the conclusion that they want to continue to see these movies or that they're even now going to more actively support them because of things that they believe about the message or, the, or whatever else. And that is their choice to make. People are making different choices. That is what people do. So, I don't know if this video is going to have a calming influence or if I just kicked a massive hornet's nest. In any case, whatever your thoughts are, please, <laughs> respectfully. At this point, it's really weird to me that I have to more actively curate and moderate the comment section on a Star Wars video than I do on a video about queer baiting. Ugh. Just whatever, you, whatever your thoughts are, please express them respectfully, even if you don't agree with me, even if you want to give me more examples that you feel I missed or, or whatever, if you want to cite me more things, fine. I'm open to, I encourage that. I want to see these sources, but please, no personal attacks against me, against the people involved in, this, in these films, or against the people who are on the other side of this argument. Whatever side you're on, just no personal attacks, because that's what will get me to remove comments. And I don't like having to do it. I don't like having to do it at all. I really don't like having to do it as actively as I've had to this past week. So if you can keep it civil, drop your comments down, down below. And let's talk about it, because I do enjoy talking about this stuff. There's also all that stuff that you can do, such as support me on Patreon, like, subscribe, and... All those things, links for all that stuff's down in the description. And until next time, this council is adjourned.